Hi. In this video, we will learn the basics of NRF 24L01 Plus device, which includes the introduction of the specifications, features and operation of the device. In the end of this video, I will show you a demo using multiple NRF 24L01 Plus modules with Arduinos. First, let's take a look at the specifications. NRF 24L01 Plus is a single-chip 2.4 GHz transceiver from a company named Nordic Semiconductor. It uses the 2.4 GHz ISM band with 126 RF channels from 2400 to 2525 MHz with 1 MHz resolution. The modulation scheme is Gaussian frequency shift keying, or GFSK for short, and supports a data rate of up to 2 megabits per second, which is configurable down to 250 kilobits per second. You can also program the output power in four steps, from 0 dBm down to minus 18 dBm. The minimum sensitivity is minus 94 dBm for a data rate of 250 kilobits per second. The supply voltage range is 1.9V to 3.6V with 5 volts tolerant SPI interface with the host controller, which makes it convenient to connect to a 5 volts I.O. system such as Arduino Uno. Now, you might have seen a chip without the plus. The plus version we see here is an enhancement version with additional 250 kilobits per second data rate capability and fast AGC in the receiver instead of the programmable LNA in the previous version. This is the internal structure of this device. The SPI interface shown in the right side communicates with the host for data transfer. When we write a data through the SPI interface, it is first stored in the TX FIFO memory before the enhanced shockburst baseband engine constructs the packet and sends it out to the RF transmitter. The received signal coming from the RF receiver is processed in the baseband engine before being transferred to the RX FIFO where the data resides until the host reads it out through the SPI interface. You can see that the RF transmitter and receiver shares one antenna interface with timing. This device uses the 2.4 GHz ISM band as we stated before. We can configure to use any 126 RF channels from 2400 MHz to 2525 MHz. For example, Channel 0 is 2400 MHz, and channel 1 is 2401 MHz and so on. The bandwidth of each channel varies according to the data rate being used. For 2 megabits per second transmission, the bandwidth is larger than the channel spacing of 1 MHz. So, you should make sure the channel spacing should be at least 2 MHz in your network when 2 megabits per second is being used. This device also has a capability of communicating with multiple nodes, which is called multiceiver. It is a feature used in the receiver that listens up to six transmitters simultaneously each with unique addresses in a single frequency channel. These logical channels are called data pipes. Each transmitter has one unique address, and the receiver denoted as PRX in this diagram, is configured with each address that matches that of the transmitter. As you can see in this data addressing example, any data pipe can have a 5-byte address. The only rule for setting the address of each data pipe is, all least significant bytes should have a unique value. The first data pipe, data pipe 0, can have a unique value for all 5 byte address. The most significant 4 bytes of other 5 pipes share their value. So it doesn't matter which value you choose for these 4 most significant bytes for all the data pipes as long as the LSB differs. The modulation used for communication in NRF 24L01 Plus is GFSK. It is a filtered version of frequency shift keying, which modulates the signal to several discrete frequencies. The Gaussian filter is applied to the data pulses to make the transition smoother. By applying this filter, the sideband power is reduced to reduce the interference with neighboring channels at the cost of increased intersymbol interference. The packet structure is shown in this page. It is the role of the enhanced shockburst baseband engine to construct and deconstruct the packet. This enhanced shockburst baseband engine also takes care of sending ACK to the transmitter or retransmitting when the signal is lost. Connecting to the Arduino is very simple. This is a connection example to the Arduino Uno, only 7 wires are necessary. The VCC is connected to 3.3 volts from the Arduino 3.3V pin, and the SPI interface can be connected accordingly. CE, or chip enable, and CNS, the chip select for the SPI, can be connected to any digital output pins from the Arduino. In my case, I connected these pins to pin number 9 and 10 respectively. Now, let me show you the demo for the basic communication of two NRF 24L01 Plus modules. Both transmitter and receiver is using Arduino Nano as a host processor. 
the transmitter is periodically sending a Boolean data to the receiver, and the LED connected to the receiver blinks according to the signal transmitted from the transmitter. These are the modules used for the demo. This one is the NRF24L01 Plus module with a PCB antenna used for the transmitter. This other one has the same connections to the transmitter, with an additional green LED connected to one of the digital output pins of the Arduino Nano. These are the codes used for the transmitter and the receiver. The codes are very similar with slight differences. First, we need to install the library. Type NRF24L01 and from the result install this RF24 library. When it is done, include the headers, and create an RF24 object with two arguments indicating the pin numbers for CE and CSN pins respectively. The address is 5 bytes as shown here. In the setup section, we need to initialize the radio object, open a writing or reading pipe depending whether it is a transmitter or a receiver. You can also set the RF channel which is not shown here so by default it is using channel 0 at 2400 MHz. Power level and data rates can also be configured here. In the loop, the transmitter sends out a simple boolean periodically, and the receiver waits for a valid signal from the transmitter, and applies it to the green LED connected to pin number 6. I will leave the links to the codes in the comment below. After loading the code to each module, you can see the green LED blinking. To make sure the LED blinking signal is coming from the transmitter, after disconnecting the power of the transmitter, the blinking stops, and resumes blinking when it is connected again. Multiceiver is shown in this demo. We have one additional transmitter with Arduino Uno, sending the same data as before. And in the receiver, the red LED is connected to indicate the data reception for this new transmitter. Let's take a look at the code first. Transmitter 1 and 2 have the same structure except for the address used. The address for transmitter 1 is 12345678900. And the address for the second transmitter is 1234567892, the third element of the array. The receiver uses the same address as the transmitters, but I intentionally modified the third byte from 56 to 55, just to show you that only the least significant byte matters. The rest of the code is similar to the code used for the receiver in the previous demo. The code is also provided in the link below. This is the setup for this multiceiver demo. This is the NRF24L01 plus PALNA module which uses the third element of the array as the address. And this module is the other transmitter using the first element of the array as the address. This is the receiver with two LEDs for each transmitter. You can see both the red and green LED blinking. Now, let me disconnect the power of the transmitter one by one to make sure the blinking signal is coming from each transmitter. As soon as I disconnected the first transmitter, the red LED stops blinking, and then continues to blink after connecting. The green LED shows the same result when second transmitter is disconnected, and connected again. This is the specification table for the modules we used for the demonstration. You can see that the module with PA and LNA has higher output power and lower receiver sensitivity for longer range communication. Let's briefly summarize what we have learned in this video. The NRF24L01 Plus uses 2.4 GHz ISM band with 1 MHz resolution and can be configured to use 126 RF channels in total. It uses GFSK modulation which is also used in Bluetooth devices. The output power and bitrate is also configurable to give optimized performance. Multiple devices can communicate within a single frequency network, with unique addresses. In the next video, we will review the long-range communications using PALNA modules with demo of non-line-of-sight indoor and line-of-sight outdoor situations. This is it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.